Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Network. Today we're talking about something huge in the Linux world. KDE has announced the alpha release of KDE Linux. Yes, KDE is officially making its own Linux operating system. So what does that mean for us users? How is it different from KDE Neon, Arch or the countless other Linux distros out there? And most importantly, should you care? Let's break it all down. KDE Linux is a brand new operating system being developed by the KDE community. The same people behind the Plasma desktop environment and tons of KDE apps like Dolphin, Console and Kden Life. Unlike KDE Neon, which has been KDE's way of shipping fresh software on top of Ubuntu, KDE Linux is built from the ground up as a showcase for KDE software. Think of it as KDE saying, if you want a pure KDE experience, this is how you think it should look and feel. Is that just another distro? The KDE team is trying something very different here. Now, KDE Linux uses Arch Linux packages as a base, but hold on, it's not an Arch based distro in the traditional sense. There is no Pac-Man, no YAI, no AUR. Instead, the system is built as an immutable operating system. That means the base OS is read only. You don't install random packages into the system like you would with Ubuntu, Fedora or Arch. Instead, you get a complete pre-built system image that updates all at once. Why does that matter? Because it makes the system much harder to break. If an update goes wrong, you can just roll back to the previous image from the boot menu. In simple terms, KDE Linux is aiming for stability even while shipping bleeding edge KDE software. Even though this is an alpha release, KDE Linux is already being used daily by its developers you get Plasma running on modern tech by default, BTRFS for the file system, Wayland for the display server, Pipewire for audio, Flatpak for apps, Systemd to glue everything together. This means the system is designed around the technologies KDE believes are the future of Linux desktops. So if you install KDE Linux today, you're not just testing KDE software, you are also helping test how well it works with these modern technologies. By the way, if you're enjoying this breakdown and want to stay updated with Linux news, tutorials and distro overviews, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. That way, you'll always know when I post new videos. Alright, let's get back to KDE Linux. Now you may be wondering, if the base OS is read-only, how do I install apps? Here is the answer. Flatpak. Most software comes from Flathub and KDE's own apps are also distributed this way. But not every KDE app works great as a flat pack yet. So the system includes some key KDE apps directly in the base OS like Dolphin, Console, Spectacle, System Settings and Discover. Other apps can be installed as flat packs from Discover or even as a snap if you prefer. And for developers, KDE Linux includes support for DistroBox and Toolbox so you can run containers with package managers if you need traditional tools. KDE Neon has been around for almost a decade, giving us the latest Plasma and KDE apps on top of Ubuntu. But Neon has reached its limits. It's maintained by very few people now and it has technical issues that makes it hard to move forward. KDE Linux is meant to be the next step, more modern, more stable and closer to how KDE developers themselves build and use KDE software. Neon isn't cancelled yet, but KDE Linux may eventually take its place as the main official KDE operating system. Let's be honest, this is an alpha release, so not everything works perfectly. Here are some issues right now. No support for old BIOS only computers, UEFI is required. Secure boot isn't working yet. Proprietary drivers for older NVIDIA GPUs aren't supported. QA and testing infrastructure is still immature. Flatpak KDE apps sometimes have small issues. Updating through Discover still has rough edges. So no, this is not a distro I'd recommend for your only work laptop just yet. KDE makes a ton of software. Right now it relies on other distros to package and ship it. By having their own OS, KDE gets full control over how their software is built, tested and delivered. This means bugs get cut earlier, updates are more consistent and developers have a reliable platform to work on. Other desktop projects do the same. GNOME, Linux Mint, Elementary OS, 
so it makes sense for KDE to have its own too. Right now, KDE Linux is mainly for KDE developers, QA testers, enthusiasts who like bleeding edge software. But in the future, it could become a very attractive option for everyday users who want the purest KDE experience. If you're excited about KDE Linux, the best thing you can do is test it and report bugs. If you find bugs in KDE Linux itself, you can report them to KDE's GitLab. If you find bugs in KDE apps, you can report them to bugs.kde.org. Your feedback helps polish the system before it becomes widely used. And KDE always welcomes developers, translators and contributors. KDE Linux Alpha is here and while it's not ready for everyone, it already shows a lot of promise. So, to quickly recap. Immutable OS with Arch packages. Modern tech, BTRFS, Wayland, Pipewire, Flatpak. Some KDE apps built in, others via Flatpak. Safer updates with rollbacks. Still rough but stable enough for adventurous users. In my opinion, this is a bold step for KDE. They're not just making a desktop anymore. They're building the full experience, top to bottom. And whether or not KDE Linux becomes your daily driver, it's going to have a huge impact on the KDE ecosystem. So what do you think? Will you try KDE Linux Alpha or wait until it's more polished? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear them. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.